parallel programming with spark preface content of this lecture in this lecture we will discuss overview of spark fundamental of scala and functional programming spark concepts spark operations and the job execution introduction to spark what is spark it is fast expressive cluster computing systems which is compatible to apache hadoop now this particular spark system works with any hadoop supported storage system such as sdfs s3 sequential file and so on which improves the efficiency through in memory computation primitives and general computational graph so uh, it also improves the usability through rich collection of apis in the form of scala java python it has the interactive cell so this all comprises of the spark scenario so using this in memory computation it is 100 times faster compared to the previous generation map reduce systems and also with the interactive uh, shell it has uh, reduced often uh, 2 to 10 times less code here uh, in this uh, particular system so uh, how to run it uh, basically uh, using local multi core system or using uh, with the with a private cluster using mesos yarn and stand alone mode so uh, spark originally uh, was written in scala which allows concise function uh, that is syntax and interactive use uh, there are apis which are available uh, for uh, java and scala and python now so interactive shells are available in scala and python now let us uh, introduce uh, to the scala uh, functional programming language so it's a high level uh, language uh um, for the java virtual machine that is uh, it can uh, compile through the uh, java virtual machine bytecode and uh, it is statically uh, typed uh, that is uh, and then it is inter operates with the java and uh, so here we are going to see the quick tour of uh, functional programming language that is scala in scala uh, the variables are defined uh, using var function where there are two ways you can define the variable one is by specifying the type of the variable that is x of type int and uh, or without specifying the type also you can define the variable such as x is equal to x is equal to 7 or you can also say var x assign int we have to specify the int so if we are not specifying the type automatically it will discover the type and uh, if we say that x is equal to 8 it will accept it but if we say x is equal to let us say uh, is then it will not accept because uh, there will be a type mismatch so automatically identifies the type here in this particular case now another way you can specify the variable is using val function val function is read only that means it is immutable you cannot change the values here in this case now another thing is uh, after declaring the variables the next thing is called functions so functions in scala uh, can be defined using def function and uh, the name of the function and uh, the arguments in it and uh, then uh, we can uh, supply the return values and for example return is of type int x cross x so it will return the values uh, accordingly so mm, there are different uh, flavors for example if uh, we want to only specify the return value so we have to say the curly brackets uh, empty and uh, x uh, into x will be returned in this particular case now if you want to return the void value uh, don't specify the type then in that case uh, after def only within the curly braces whatever we write down so here that uh, will uh, not specify or it will be a void type of return value 
that is equivalent to the uh, the Java uh, functional programming. Here we have to specify the void. Here automatically, if you don't specify the type, then automatically it will take the void, and rest of the uh, commands will be written uh, enclosing with, within the curly braces. So we have seen the how the variables are declared, how the functions are defined using def function, and uh, uh, the next uh, thing is uh, is the generic types. So we can uh, specify uh, the type uh, array uh, as uh, this array of uh, int a type. Similarly, we can also define the list very simply as a list of items, list of one, two, three, four, and uh, this is this type is of type uh, of first is the list of int values here in this case. Similarly, we can also specify the indexing. So, this is equivalent to the uh, Java equivalent where array under uh, this square bracket 5 which is written here uh, we have to specify the indexes that is array at the fifth element we are storing uh, the value 7 in this case. And if we print uh, the list uh, of its uh, fifth element then it will uh, print the value which is stored in the list. Now, processing collection with the functional programming, uh, here we can see that uh, uh, it is very easy uh, to define the list of values 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, as a list and then uh, using uh, for each command um, that is on list uh, uh, we can uh, scan through uh, this particular uh, uh, function for each uh, element of that particular list and uh, for uh, here we can specify a uh, function uh, on uh, every element. So, this says that for uh, every element of this list uh, that is x, we apply this particular function uh, print ln. So, hence it will print uh, 1, 2, 3 that means all these values of the list will be printed. So, the short form we can write down like this for each list dot for each we can specify the print ln and it will do the same uh, uh, things. Similarly, uh, we can also apply, uh, we can perform uh, the map operation on n every element of the list and uh, this map function says that on every element of the list you have to add plus 2 on it. So, 1, 2, 3. So, if you add plus 2 on 1 it become 3. Uh, 2 plus 2 that is 4, 3 plus 2 that is 5. And uh, the same thing we can specify uh, using uh, this uh, underscore notation that uh, it says that uh, take uh, uh, the first element of this, uh, take the element from the list and uh, add to it. Uh, it will be uh, denoting the same thing. So, therefore, uh, uh, using uh, this particular map function applying on each and every element of uh, this list and we have to specify what we have to do and uh, uh, this way uh, this is supported. Now, we can apply the filter on it. Uh, so, that means every element of the list we can apply the filter function and filter function says that uh, the uh, for every element of x and if it is odd number uh, then, then it will print uh, the, the list of items. So, list will return again a list similarly here again it will return a list after filtering it and uh, instead of uh, saying uh, this uh, full uh, statement we can specify in a, in a shortcut in a shorthand that is underscore uh, percentage 2 that means it will uh, it will check whether it is even whether if it is odd uh, that means by uh, saying that uh, mod of 2 if it is 1 that is it is odd number then it will print in the list as it is. So, uh, again there is another function which is called reduce in a scalar. So, uh, this uh, reduce function what it will do? Uh, it will reduce on uh, these elements x and y is the pair of elements and uh, it will uh, give x plus y. So, this particular uh, reduce function is when it is applied on the list of elements. So, you can see that uh, uh, it will add all of them and the value of 6 will be given. This reduce uh, same thing instead of uh, writing this complete expression we can also uh, specify in a shorthand 
uh, so that means it will take all the arguments and uh, do the summation and it will return a list so it will be a list which contains only one element it will uh, perform the reduction operation so all of these will leave the list unchanged hence the list is immutable here in this case uh, now let us see the scala closure syntax uh, more of it so this uh, we have seen the full version that is x uh, colon into uh, will return x plus uh, 2 and uh, this is the type info that is x uh, assigned to x plus uh, 2 that is type info and uh, uh, here the first argument plus 2 each argument plus 2 has uh, uh, plus 2 is also doing the same thing and uh, x uh, will uh, be equivalent to x is assigned x will be applied on uh, val number uh, to add uh, this is equal to 2 x plus uh, number to add uh, this also uh, will be applied uh, on uh, these functions. Now, if the closure is too long, uh, can always uh, pass a function and uh, here in this case, uh, we can see that uh, using def, we can apply, def means we can define as a, it as a function and uh, add 2 uh, x colon is integer and int is equal to x plus 2 here in this case and it will uh, now perform on this list the map add to uh, this particular same thing we can now perform using. So, Scala allows defining a local function inside another function. Uh, there similarly, there are other collection methods which are available in the Scala. So, Scala collection provides many other functional methods for example, uh, as uh, Google for Scala sequence we can see on it. So, map function is uh, uh, can be applied and uh, which will pass each uh, element through a function f and similarly flat map uh, one to many map function it will ap uh, apply similarly for the filter it will keep the element passing f and uh, uh, exist means uh, true if one element passes for all reduce group by and sort by all different uh, methods are available. Now, let us see the spark concepts. So, here the goal of Spark is uh, to provide a distributed uh, collection and uh, uh, here the concept of Spark is uh, to support this uh, distributed computation in the form of resilient distributed data sets and RDDs are immutable collection of objects which are spread uh, across the clusters and uh, these RDDs they are built through a transformation such as map, filter, etc. And uh, these uh, particular uh, uh, RDDs, they are automatically rebuilt uh, on the failure. That means a lineage is automatically generated, and whenever there is a failure, it will be reconstructed. Similarly, it is also controllable uh, persistence. That is, the cache uh, in the RAM is being done. So the main primitives is RDDs which are immutable partition collection of objects various uh, transformations are applied on the RDDs such as map filter and group by join and uh, these are all lazy operations to build RDDs from other RDDs and uh, uh, besides transformations uh, actions also can be defined on RDDs such as count collect save and it will return the values or it will write it on the on the disk. Now, let us see one uh, example of, uh, of uh, mining the console logs uh, using uh, the Scala program written uh, in Spark uh, and uh, here uh, it what it will do, it will load the error messages uh, from a log into the memory and then interactively search for a pattern. So, <clears throat> let us see that uh, the, the Spark program now you, you, you know that it uh, runs in a form of a master that is the driver and the worker system and the first line uh, written uh, is to uh, read uh, this particular log files that is uh, uh, in the from the SDFS it will read the text file and uh, this uh, particular lines after reading it it will become uh, in memory. Uh, so, it will generate the, uh, the base RDD after reading the file. And uh, then uh, what it does is apply the filter on uh, the lines which are now read in, into the in memory, it will apply the filter operation that we have seen 
on the lines and in this filter operation what it does is uh, uh, it will identify uh, the, uh, the, the, the errors uh, uh, which are uh, appearing in the, in, the, in the log files and uh, this will perform a transformation after filtering and they are collected in the form of uh, another RDD that is errors RDD and using this errors RDD now we can apply the map function and uh, which says that uh, using this map function now you can uh, split uh, this uh, uh, S uh, to uh, the wherever the tabs are there and uh, they will be uh, now dividing uh, these uh, into the different error messages and these error messages are now cached. So, apply the filter on these error messages that wherever this uh, uh, foo is available or appearing in the uh, message and you have to make a count of it, how many such foo messages are appearing in uh, this error uh, message. So, uh, here the count is the action and before that all were transformations. So, let us see how it will be done. So, wherever these uh, messages are storing on that uh, this uh, foo will be counted. So, just see that uh, the driver will perform a task to count. So, task is to count. This particular task will be communicated by the driver to all the uh, workers and they will count and uh, then return the result back to the driver and also it will be uh, in the cache. These messages will be in the cache. Now, the next time when uh, you want to filter the the particular string that is called a bar from the message, then it will be performed in the cache itself. It will not go and look up into the in, into the disk. It will not be done in the disk. It will be now returned back from the from the cache itself. So the results will be quickly returned back because uh, so therefore the full uh, text search of a Wikipedia can be done uh, in a less than one second. Uh, if it is in the cache or, or it is 20 second if it is uh, done through the disk uh, uh, access. So, therefore, if the data is scaled to 1 terabyte, then it will take 5 to 7 seconds if it is to be uh, accessed through the cache or it is 170 seconds if it is on disk data. So, in all cases, uh, this entire big corpus of terabyte of data can be uh, processed uh, very efficiently and in a uh, very uh, quickly. Now, let us see the uh, uh, RDDs fault tolerance. So, RDDs uh, will track the transformations used to build them uh, through the lineage to recompute the last uh, uh, data. So, here we can see that uh, uh, once we specify these uh, uh, filter that is uh, using filter which contains the error and then uh, it will split uh, all those messages uh, which are uh, tab uh, separated and uh, this will be collected in the form of messages. So, let us see that uh, this particular filtered RDDs uh, will contain uh, the information and they are now stored in the SDFS file system. So, RDDs uh, keep track of the transformations uh, used to build them uh, their lineage to recompute the lost data. So, fault recovery test if we see here is that, uh, so the iteration time and uh, the failure happens is uh, recovery is uh, quite efficiently done. Uh, now, behavior with the less RAM you can see that uh, if it is fully cached uh, then it will iteration time will be quite less here in this case. Now, the question is what language you can use, uh, obviously uh, Scala uh, will be performing a uh, better one. Let us uh, see the tour of uh, Spark for the operations. So, easiest way uh, to use the Spark is via the interpreter or the shell and uh, it runs in a local mode with only one uh, thread by default, but control can be uh, with the master one and uh, cluster. So, the first uh, stop is uh, through the uh, uh, through the Spark context, this is the main entry point to the Spark functionality, which is created uh, through the Spark shell. And uh, let us see uh, how to create uh, this uh, entire uh, operation. Uh, 
uh, that is so first thing is uh, we have to uh, process this uh, particular list and uh, spar context will turn the local collection into an rdd and uh, then it will load the text file uh, from local file system sdfs or s3 so that is called text file sc.txt file similarly we can also use the existing hadoop input uh, uh, format uh, for uh, the uh, creating rdds uh, that is reading the data and creating the rdds now the basic transformations uh, are shown over here uh, which are provided in the form of spark is uh, um, not only we can create the rdds now we can perform the functions uh, on these rdds using map function and we can apply uh, this uh, operate operations and uh, these operations are uh, this uh, uh, saying that for every element of uh, uh, this uh, numbers uh, we have to apply uh, x star x means multiplication operation has to be done so just see that 1 2 3 is basically the 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 numbers so the so if we can take the square so it will become an square rdd similarly uh, we can keep elements passing as a pro, as a predicate and uh, we can see that uh, we can apply the filter on the square uh, saying that uh, if uh, uh, it is even number that is uh, x uh, modulo 2 becomes 0 that means uh, it is checking whether it is uh, even number then only it will uh, output in the even number so you see here out of uh, 149 uh, what is even number is uh, the 4 and uh, 9 and 1 will not be uh, will be filtered out only 4 will be passed uh, finally uh, the map function on each element uh, uh, each element to generate 0 or more others using flat map operation so flat map on the numbers so the numbers is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 uh, if we apply the flat map uh, which says that uh, the lambda x uh, is in the range 0 to x and uh, 0 to x it will so x means uh, for example the number 1 from the list if it is taken so it will generate the number in the range 0 to x means 0 to 1 so it will generate uh, 0 uh, it will generate uh, uh, 0 and uh, then uh, then the next uh, element is 2 it will generate uh, 0 1 and 2 0 and 1 it will generate and finally 3 means 0 1 and 2 it will generate 0 and x minus 1 so the flat map will be uh, now uh, is able to generate more than one elements um, uh, in this particular uh, uh, manner so the range of the values uh, is nothing but the sequence of the numbers from 0 to x minus 1 it will generate and uh, so here uh, it will generate uh, 1 for for 1 it will generate 0 and for 2 it will generate 0 and 1 and for 3 it will generate 0 uh, 1 and 2 so that is called flat map operation and this is the basic transformation and uh, now we are going to uh, uh, see some of the actions uh, we have seen transformations now we have to see some actions so actions means uh, let us assume that we are given the list and uh, this list is uh, now taken up in the rdds which are called numbers and it will retrieve the rdd uh, content as a local collection now uh, in this particular uh, when we say collect it will uh, now store as a local collection and uh, when we say that uh, return first k elements so it will uh, take uh, two elements out of this particular uh, three elements and uh, now when we say count uh, count is an action uh, all these are action when we say a count so it will output the value 3 in this case take 2 means it will produce a list of uh, two elements collect means it will uh, print all the uh, collection of all the elements similarly when we say uh, the merge the elements with the associative function and we apply the reduce function on the number 
uh, wherein uh, it says that x y is equal to x plus y that means all the numbers are to be added up and the value of 6 will be returned back by the reduce function. Similarly, we can also do a uh, uh, save the uh, elements to the file save to the as the text file and we have to specify the name of the file. So, all the all these uh, numbers will be now saved in this list uh, that is RDDs uh, in the form of uh, numbers it will be saved into a file. And uh, now let us see how to work with key value pairs. Now, sparse distributed reduced transformation acts on uh, RDDs of the key value pairs and uh, key value pairs means uh, here uh, whether if the value if the pair is x y. So, uh, we can specify the pair uh, with the first argument as a and the pair with the second argument as b. So, these are some of the operations. Now, let us see some more uh, key value pair operations. For example, if we have the locally defined data uh, in the form of a key value pair cat with the value 1, dog with the value 1 and cat with the value 2. Uh, and uh, this will be now generated as the PEX RDD and when we apply the reduce by key. Uh, so, therefore, uh, in the reduce by key we will say that x y is equal to x plus y. So, that means uh, whenever given x and y, um, uh, so it will be uh, reduced by x plus y. So, here in this case uh, the, the cat will have uh, two different uh, objects. So, key uh, reduced by key that is the cat is uh, appearing twice and it will make the sum of uh, these values x plus y for the uh, values of the same uh, key. Similarly, dog will be uh, having only one key. Similarly, now group by uh, key if group by key is there then uh, it will uh, say that uh, the cat will have the uh, sequence it will not add, but it will generate the value that is sequence 1 and 2 and dog will be having the sequence 1. Similarly, when we say that sort by key then uh, cat value 1 will be sorted will be in this order and then cat 2 and then dog 1. So, reduce by key also automatically implements the combiner on the map side. Now, let us see the full uh, use of uh, full execution of the word count program. So, word count program means uh, if let us say file contains all the uh, lines. Uh, and uh, it will be read into the, uh, the lines as RDDs. Uh, then uh, what we can do is when we apply the flat map operation on the lines and uh, uh, this flat map will now split the line based on the spaces. So, let us take this example uh, 2BR will have uh, this space separated. So, what it will do is it will now I split the line into the words. So, 2B R will have three different words uh, are generated. Similarly, this another line will generate not to be as three different words and then map function will be applied on these words. So, these words means map function will what it will do it will for every word it will generate word comma 1. So, 2 it will generate 2 comma 1 B B comma 1 or or 1. Uh, not comma 1 and 2 comma 1 and b comma 1. So, after having generated uh, this map function now it will reduce by the key. So, reduce by the key in the sense it will say that uh, for a particular key it will do the summation. So, for the same keys uh, for example, b is the key uh, is which is appearing in this particular uh, map uh, output and uh, here also this is the output they will be collected back and uh, that their values will be aggregated according to the plus sign. So, 2 will be there. Similarly, uh, uh, 2 is also appearing 2 times and 2 will be gathered over here and their values also will be added up and wh whereas, all others are uh, uh, appearing only once. So, not will be uh, collected over there and or will be connected over there. So, this is the reduce function uh, which will be applied. There are other key value operations and uh, uh, now we can uh, see about uh, these operations which uh, basically are uh, mentioned over here like, um, uh, like join and co-group operations. 
and uh, now uh, we can uh, all the pair RDDs operations take the optional second parameter for the number of tasks and uh, this we have shown over here and uh, external variables uh, you can you use in the closure will automatically be shipped to the to the cluster so all these are the implementation issues so for other rdd operations the programming guide is there and uh, that can be seen now let us see about the job execution uh, in spark it has various software components and uh, when you say spark context it will be creating it will be created in the uh, master job master and uh, then it will uh, create uh, the worker threads uh, in the form of uh, spark context and then spark executors will execute them similarly uh, there will be a task scheduler task scheduler will uh, support uh, the general uh, task graphs internally and uh, pipelines uh, will be also pipeline functions where possible they will be created by uh, the task scheduler and cache aware data reuse and locality and uh, partition aware uh, uh, things are done to avoid the shuffles so more uh, information about resources on scala is available and uh, let and the hadoop is uh, spark can read and write to any storage system format that has plug into the hadoop and uh, apis like spark context file supports uh, uh, while the Spark context Hadoop RDD uh, allows pass any uh, Hadoop job to configure the input file, and uh, this is to create the Spark context. Uh, now, Spark context uh, when we say it has different arguments, so the first one is called master URL is nothing but to create the URL or a local uh, oblique uh, in local uh, node n. Uh, so uh, next one, next thing is application name and then uh, spark will uh, now install the path on the cluster uh, with the name spark home and finally the list of jar files also has to be uh, given in the spark context automatically it creates a spark context using the jar, fi jar file so uh, now this is the complete uh, word count program which we have uh, discussed uh, shown over here as uh, the local and word count is the name of the program arguments are there and uh, this argument number one and uh, now let us see an example of a page rank algorithm how we can uh, execute in the uh, spark system so let us start let us see the algorithm start uh, at each page uh, rank of one so let us say these are different pages and they are initialized with the rank one at all the places the second step is that on each iteration how uh, the page p contribute the rank as rank of page p divided by uh, the total number of neighbors and uh, for each page rank uh, it will set as uh, 0.15 plus 0.85 times the contributions so uh, here we can see uh, that um, here we can see that uh, uh, this particular node uh, is uh, basically this particular node has two links out so the contribution of one will be divided equally 0.5 and 0.5 similarly uh, this uh, page also has two outgoing lines links so it will be also having a contributions of 0.5 and uh, this will have only one so it will be having the contribution of entire one and uh, this page is also having one so it will be having contribution of one now let us see that uh, this particular page we can see that it is uh, now incoming so it is incoming with 0.5 so now we have to calculate according to this 0.15 plus 0.85 multiplied by 0.5 uh, so that will be the new page rank of this and uh, as far as uh, uh, this particular page is concerned the incoming is uh, 1 so 0.85 multiplied by 1 plus 0.15 so the page rank will become uh, 1 in that case so 1 will not be changed so this will be the page rank 1 and uh, how about this 
so here one two three different uh, links are coming uh, so with the uh, uh, with uh, this uh, this link will be one plus this will be one and this will be 0 0.5 and this also will be uh, the the um, this also will be 0 0.5 so this become 2 multiplied by 0 0.85 plus 0 0.15 and uh, this also uh, will have the same so let us see that after doing this particular iterations so the page rank will now be changed into uh, as we have seen that it will be 1 it is 0 0.8 0 0.58 0 0.58 0 0.85 1.85 and uh, this particular iterations will continue and uh, here it will stop why because it is not going to change further let us see how this uh, entire page rank algorithm can be implemented using scala so here we have two rdds one is in the form of a links the other is in the form of the ranks so this rank means it's a page rank uh, URL in the page rank and the link means uh, the, the URL and the link uh, pairs will be there and now uh, iterations will now start and uh, one to the maximum number of iterations we will contribute now as far as uh, the contributions uh, we have to uh, join uh, with the links and the ranks using flat map what we will do is uh, we will start the case as URL and uh, links uh, comma uh, rank and uh, this will do the flat map and destination will be now calculated as destination and rank divided by uh, links dot size and then uh, what we will do we will reduce uh, by key uh, the contributions and store in the in the ranks field in the ranks RDD and the map will be now uh, 0.15 uh, times 0 0.1 uh, 0.85 into the the uh, this one contributions which are now calculated uh, in the previous uh, steps and uh, this uh, particular operations will be saved in a file so we see that the page rank performance uh, with the spark it is uh, very efficient and very fast compared to the hadoop here uh, if the number of machines are 60 then the iteration time is very less uh, there are other iterative algorithms which are implemented in the spark such as uh, k-means clustering logistic regression uh, in all the cases you see that uh, uh, spark is very very efficient compared to the hadoop uh, uh, in the iterations so these are some of the references uh, for the spark to be so conclusion is spark offers rich apis to make the data analytics fast both fast to write and fast to run it achieves 100 times speed up in the real applications the growing community with 14 companies are contributing to it and details uh, tutorials are available um, in uh, the website www.spark-project.org thank you